let's talk about burnishing. So we just did our edge beveling. We don't have a 90 degree edge anymore, which is good. Problem is, I intentionally was pretty aggressive in my sanding and I used a real low grit. This isn't gonna burnish real well. There's a couple of things we can do. First, we can go to higher grits to get a smoother edge here. Or we can just give ourselves a new straight edge. Now we don't have to think too much about sanding. So we're starting from square one. Going to bevel again. When you're doing this, make sure to do it as close to 90 as you, or 45 degrees as you can. If you're too aggressive and you come in too far, you'll actually mark the leather. So I'm doing it here to show you. There's now a, a crease right here from the edge of that foot. So you want to be a little more 45 if you start having that problem. Do the back as well. Now let's talk about burnishing. This is a, a step to get stip, skipped quite a bit, but is really important for a nice finished product. If you're working with veg tan leather, it also is going to seal all of these fibers from oils and water getting in and damaging that leather. You can use a couple of agents to do the burnishing. You can use water if you want to. Uh, you could use orange juice if you wanted to. Typically what's used is either gum track or tokenol. I prefer tokenol. It has a little bit of a stickiness to it and it works quite a bit better for me personally than gum track does. This is clear. You can get them in different colors, blacks, browns, things like that. I like the clear. A little goes a long way with this stuff. Just put it down my edge. If I'm doing a lot of these or I'm doing a, a strap or something, I'll typically use a little brush to apply it. And you just rub it in. You gotta be thoughtful that you don't leave too much behind. Certain leathers, it can stain it, particularly on the flesh side. Now we have our token all applied. We're gonna have to do something to build up the friction and get our burnish. If you're doing it by hand, the two real main options here are a slicker or just a piece of canvas. Now the benefit to the canvas for me personally is I feel that it gets the friction up faster, it burnishes faster, and I can really feel what I'm doing. But let's start with the slicker, some people prefer this. So you have these different gauges. What you're looking for is no daylight. Might be kind of hard to tell. This one, I can see daylight through there. There you go, you can see through it. That's way too narrow. This is way, way too narrow. This, it's too much rounding. So there's our spot right here. All you're gonna do is go back and forth and you're trying to build the friction. You'll see the color starts to darken and there will be a definitive point where it starts to stick a little bit. You'll hear and feel a little bit of a squeak. Takes a minute. There. Okay, so I felt it there. I haven't done the entirety of it. I kinda didn't do this portion, but that's okay. Now we have this edge probably will catch the light. Yep. Nice and smooth. Edges are sealed. You can make this a lot prettier if you want to go to a real high grit sandpaper before you do the burnishing. Let's look at the other option with the canvas, which is my preferred method. A buddy of mine showed me this trick quite a while ago now, and I still use it every day the canvas. Let's 
It's going to go a lot faster. Done. We'll do this back part. So we're done with a piece of canvas now, nice and easy. We're just trying to build friction so you don't need to go crazy, but a moderate amount of pressure is gonna get a pretty good result. 